evening and uh, thank you, Sarah, uh, for those kind words about India and particularly Telangana. Thank you very much. My principal secretary, Jai Shranjan, to all uh, the distinguished uh, gathering here um, and to all the members of uh, Australian uh, Consul General's office in Chennai. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this event today. Thank you, um, you know, to also refer some of our best, uh, thank you for also referring to some of our best academic institutions, including IIT Hyderabad. Professor Murthy, thank you. Always a pleasure seeing you. Um, Sarah, before I talk about trade commerce, I think we should talk about cricket as well. You know, we've been doing rather well. I think <laughs> it was. Um, so I would say, you know, Australia, India, I think we share a lot of things in common, one among which, of course, is cricket. You know, it's a passion, it's a religion in India. And I, I don't think Indians have ever played uh, better cricket than, than when we do against uh, Australia, I think. One of our own, one of our own uh, homegrown boys, uh, VVS Lakshman, you know, he's, he's uh, I think his best innings and his, some of his best knocks have been in Sydney, have been in Melbourne, have been on, on uh, the land of, uh, in Down Under. And um, we just take a lot of pride in the way, uh, you know, Indians have evolved, especially in cricket over the last few years. And I hope that our dominance over Australian cricket continues, <laughs> no matter what happens in trade and commerce. No matter what happens in economics, I think it's important for Indians, uh, you know, to feel good about cricket. So thank you. And, and, and Sarah, I also wanted to tell you, uh, we are the best city in South India. So if you, since you're in Hyderabad, you know, you mentioned Bangalore and Chennai, which are of course also close to my heart, but I think, uh, you know, not me, but Mercer keeps telling every year, from 2015 onwards till now, for the last five years in a row, that Hyderabad is a city among all Indian cities, not just South India. As, as the city with the best quality of living. So therefore, you should seriously consider setting up a consul general uh, right here in our city because you have the United States whose uh, consul's office, in fact, issues the largest number of visas in, in the entire world, not India. In fact, student visas from Hyderabad are the highest in the world for the United States. I'm pretty sure that uh, UK is not very far behind. And we have a shared history with UK, as, as I, I mean, as, you, as we both know. So I would suggest very strongly, and I see Michelle here as well, looking after trade, and we had met recently as well. Um, I suggest very strongly that, uh, you know, along with Bangalore, of course, Bangalore is a good city. You also consider and propose to your government to set up a consul general's office in Hyderabad. I think that would really help. But I'm delighted with uh, what you've just mentioned. I'm, I've been a very strong proponent, very strong advocate of one thing, when I, whenever I meet any investor, any prospective investor, I keep telling them, I keep reminding them that uh, when, when, they, when they talk of India and investments in India, I remind them that there is no one India. This notion of one India is actually a fallacy because India is a, is a heterogeneous, complex, a very diverse nation. Of course, we are all Indians first, without a question, and then we, in the respect to our sub-identity as a state and then as a Telugu, etc., etc. But the fact is, when it comes to doing business in India, it depends on which port of entry, which gateway you choose to work or to enter India. For instance, if you were to enter, if an Australian firm were to enter India through Hyderabad, their experience would be drastically different um, compared to entering through another state. I would not want to name names, but most certainly I'll tell you that uh, this would be a very different experience. So the notion of doing business in India will vary from the choice of your destination. So therefore, I've been a very strong proponent that uh, while it's important to have free trade agreements, while it's also important to have, uh, you know, re regulations and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, frameworks with respect to foreign direct investment, what is far more important from an individual in investor perspective is, you know, the, the real action when it, when it comes to investing actually is in the hands of a state because land, power, water, fiscal incentives, manpower, and the day-to-day day -day daily operational issues, all of those lie actually within the domain of a state government because India is a federal republic. We are a union of states. So therefore, my <clears throat> humble appeal to the Australian government through you and Australian investor community through you again is that you need to engage bilaterally, directly, with the states. While it's important to be engaged at uh, New Delhi's level, but what's equally important is to actually engage directly bilaterally with various states. Because each state has its own strengths. 
For example, the state of Telangana has chosen 14 areas as thrust areas for inviting investment. My sister state, Andhra Pradesh, which also falls under you, um, has a huge coastline, which I do not have, which the state of Telangana does not have. So therefore, our stents are complementary. We need to figure out who to work with on which front. So that sort of a combination, that sort of a positioning is equally important to understand. More importantly, you know, I'm happy to learn that Telangana has been identified by the Australian government as one of the featured states in this report that you've just shared with us as an investor-friendly state uh, with which Australian companies can actually do business. When we launched our industrial policy back in uh, 2014, we had kept in mind the apprehensions of international investor community uh, that typically are about investing in a country like India. India is you know, one of the biggest concerns about investing in India. Uh, with, I'm saying this with uh, Jayesh Ranjan right in front of me, is uh, you know, the proverbial bureaucratic red tape which kind of has bothered, uh, and Jayesh is of course very different, trust me. I've worked with him long enough. I think uh, if every bureaucrat in India was like Jayesh, it would have been a very different India. I mean, that's a different story. But, uh, but the proverbial red tape that everybody uh, frets about while, when it comes to doing business in India is something that we had in mind, and that is something that we wanted to address with this policy. So the industrial policy that we brought in 2014 confers upon the investor a right to self-certify, which no state in India will actually offer you. An investor can actually self-certify themselves and as being in compliance with the law of the land, stating explicitly that they will abide and they will basically follow uh, whatever law is that is laid out for an investor into, into the country and into the state. We are the first state in the country to have introduced this system, meaning that a, when a company lands, and an Australian company lands uh, in, in Hyderabad or in Telangana, you can start the construction of your factory on day one without any clearance from the government. You can self-certify and you can start construction on day one. Even in the most well-governed states in India, typically this process of clearances, this process of approvals takes anywhere between one to three months. In Telangana, we've made it zero. There is no lag time. You can start on day one. Not only does it save on time and cost, it also guarantees a hassle-free experience of working autonomously uh, and anonymously in the state. Only for regulatory purposes, of course, we ask that the investor file an application online outlining the details of their project. The online system takes care of all the departments that are involved in issuing permissions so that the investor is not required to physically visit or meet anyone. Before the commencement of commercial operations, our TSI pass law guarantees that all permissions will be given in a maximum of 15 days. If, due to any eventuality, we are unable to meet the 15-day window, the law also has a provision of deemed approval. So it's an approval by default. So no individual can actually hold on to any clearance without any, any, any possible uh, uh, you know, solid explanation. What this does is essentially, it, makes, it takes out the individual from the decision-making process. It institutionalizes that process, I think, which is extremely important. It takes out a person from that process and creates a process which, which kind of supersedes a person or an individual. So for instance, even if my principal secretary or a commissioner of industries or even me for that matter, a minister is shifted to another post or if even if there is a change of guard, what remains is the process, what remains is the institution. I think individuals are temporary, institutions are permanent. That's what we've made uh, a conscious decision uh, around. And I also, let me also add, there's another feature in the law that upholds the government accountable for its promises. In case any official is found to have delayed the approval beyond the time stipulated, which is a 15-day window, he or she is finalized a sum of rupees 1,000 per day for the number of days uh, for the delay. I'm happy to share with you also that the progressive TSI, policy, TSI pass policy has been implemented successfully in more than 19,000 cases over the last eight years, bringing almost 35 billion US dollars worth of investments and has created a potential of 1.6 million jobs directly. More than anything else, the most satisfying indicator of all has been the fact that 24% of our investments have been repeat investments. Now, this is important because only when, you see, governments are very good uh, at, at you know, laying the ground, ground rules and inviting new investments, but we tend to forget once an investor is landed into a state, 
we tend to forget that they, are, they can be our biggest brand ambassadors provided we handle them well. This is something that we have not forgotten and therefore today we have more than 24% of our investments in the last eight years coming in as repeat investments. Let me just give you an example of one specific uh, personality, one specific investor, a gentleman called Sandeep Somani who heads HSIL, Hindustan Sanitary and Wear Limited, had one factory before the formation of Telangana. Today he has eight factories. So he has added seven more factories in the last eight years. So which goes to show you the kind of confidence investors have in the state of Telangana. The more important thing, uh, you know, uh, is we have identified, like I mentioned, 14 trust areas, uh, which are priority for us in terms of seeking our investments. We have chosen these areas very carefully. Some of these areas are where we already have a strong manufacturing legacy, like the life sciences sector. You talked about biological E and the role they've been playing with quad, va quad vaccine. Uh, I'm proud to share with you, Sarah. Not ba it's not Bangalore or Chennai or Pune, but it is Hyderabad, which is the vaccine capital of the world. We manufacture 9 billion doses of vaccines every year, human vaccines. That makes us 33%, uh, that accounts to 33% of human vaccine production. And life sciences is one of our very, very important uh, sectors. In fact, I keep saying this and I can't say it enough. Hyderabad is that beautiful melting pot where the north of India meets the south of India. Hyderabad is that melting pot where biology meets technology. Hyderabad is that melting pot where life sciences marries data sciences. So this is brilliant because I think the possibilities of these intersection are something truly um, you're only, uh, where you're only limited by your imagination. So therefore, um, I think uh, this is the right time basically to look at life sciences and emerging healthcare technologies and innovation that's happening in these uh, areas. There are other areas, of course, you know, like uh, food processing, textiles, which can be large employment generators, especially in rural areas. And in fact, we think on scale. Uh, when we launched the textile park in Warangal, Kakatiya Mega Textile Park, it was and it still is India's largest textile park in about 1,300 acres. It's important to think on scale because unless you do that, you cannot compete with large manufacturing nations like China or the United States. The economies of scale that our manufacturers are wanting can only be augmented with good free trade agreements, of course. The export potential can be harnessed by way of achieving these on scale. India, there's no dearth of uh, talented uh, work resources, human resources. But most certainly what we could use is, uh, you know, industrial parks on scale. We are on the verge of launching the world's largest pharma cluster called as Hyderabad Pharma City in about 19,000 acres. You also mentioned medical devices. Now, we are also home to the country's largest, India's largest medical devices park in about 300 acres where we have 50 plus enterprises working out of. And we are also looking at uh, newer areas, newer opportunities such as electronics, electric vehicles. And for each of these priority sectors, we have dedicated industrial parks, which, uh, of course, are complemented by the best of human resources available, which come from wonderful institutions such as IIT, the IIIT, ISB, NALSER, and the other engineering and uh, you know, medical colleges and, and professional colleges which are set up in and around the state. And uh, I'd also like to point out very quickly, we have a very professional unit in our Industries and Commerce Department called as the Invest Telangana, in which we have taken young professionals having domain experiences from the open market to work for the government. They will handhold any prospective Australian investor who's wanting to invest in India so that they can innovate, incubate, and incorporate readily all in our state in Telangana and can use this. You know, the geographical centricity of Hyderabad and Telangana make it an ideal place for you to base out of and create a hub and spoke model where Hyderabad can be the hub and you can reach the entire country, uh, you know, entire 27 other states for your business requirements. And I'm confident that Australian companies will find the journey from their journey in Telangana very rewarding and flourishing. Other than investments, let me also quickly add, Telangana has a great potential to support and exchange startups and academia. You mentioned education, you talked about innovation also. Over the last eight years, we've been successful in creating very meticulous and comprehensive innovation ecosystem with various institutions like T-Hub. In fact, on the 28th of June, uh, Sarah, we are launching the world's largest technology incubator called as T-Hub, the phase two of it, in about 370,000 of square feet of physical space. We invite you and Australian uh, ambassador as well, of course, uh, to come and join us for this momentous occasion. We also have V-Hub, which we've alluded to and which is headed by Deepti here. 
we have uh, has been a uh, you know great partner to the Australian government. We had uh, your High Commissioner here, who was also kind enough. Barry, Barry had, was here. You know, he had uh, uh, supported us in our various initiatives. T Works again, India's largest uh, prototyping facility, will be unveiled soon. Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge Task is an important uh, institution for us to harness the wonderful talent that we have in Telangana. TSIC, the Telangana State Innovation Cell, with the Chief Innovation Officer, uh, is again an enterprise that believes in catching our youngsters uh, a very, at a very young age and grooming them as potential entrepreneurs. Now, RICH is the last institution that I'll mention, Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad, which basically tries, about, tries to bring about a synergy between the academia, the wonderful institutions we have, we have wonderful scientific labs we have in Hyderabad, that, such as the CCMB, IICT, uh, CFTRI, we have NGRI, we have several others, NIN. All of these, you know, working in tandem with industry is what makes the ecosystem very special. Many young entrepreneurs have received incubation and acceleration support through these institutions, and today they're already, uh, you know, they're ready to deploy products and solutions that can work in Australia quite well as well. Innovation has to be a two-way street. You know, we have to have young innovators from India exploring down under in Australia and vice versa. We want Australian innovators and youngsters to come to India to explore the large Indian market, and we can facilitate that through the gateway of Telangana. At the same time, like I said, you know, we would love uh, to see more and more collaboration between Australian institutions, academic institutions, and Indian uh, Telangana's, uh, you know, brilliant uh, educational institutions. We're working uh, on certain plans uh, to set up a world-class life sciences university. In fact, the last 10 days, I was in UK, and I was also in uh, Davos at uh, the World Economic Forum. We've had the privilege of interacting with uh, academicians uh, and top-notch research scholars, both at Oxford and King's College in London. In fact, King's College has come forward, and uh, they have entered into a memorandum of understanding with us on the life sciences university. We already work with Cranfield University of United Kingdom uh, on, the life, on the aviation ecosystem. So we are always looking for partners who can potentially come forward, partner with the local government here, and establish a truly world-class institution which can offer more and more opportunities to our youngsters. Um, so we look forward again to identify suitable partners from Australia. We've had a preliminary discussion um, when we were here about 15 days ago with Michelle and uh, uh, a few of your other colleagues who are, from, who are here from Australia. And I'm once again, of course, looking forward to more and more collaboration on the education front. We are delighted once again, and we thank you. I, I thank you on behalf of my government to have identified, for having identified Telangana as a prospective and, an and, a, and, a, and a state with good potential to do business in India. I would request, of course, uh, you to consider organizing some more webinars for our entrepreneurs because, you know, I see uh, FITAPSI and others uh, among uh, the, you know, uh, gathering here. I would request you to work with our team here, our entrepreneurial ecosystem here, to organize more of these events so that they familiarize themselves with uh, uh, the various opportunities in Australia and uh, look forward to more road shows as well so that we can actually have our entrepreneurs talk and interact uh, directly with their Australian counterparts. Thank you once again for uh, visiting Hyderabad, but I would rather have you stationed here and uh, open a consul's office. Thank you. Jai Telangana. Jai.